Hey, it's Eric Lima here, and this is a YouTube show in which sentimental things, uh, thoughts come from my heart. And it's also the YouTube show of mental oddball shenanigans running through my brain. It's EML77 TV, and this is episode 462. How's everyone going, and how's everyone doing? Well, the Super Bowl has come and went, and uh, I'm going to give you my after thoughts on it. I did pick the 49ers to beat the Chiefs 24 to 21, but I warned that. We shouldn't sleep on the Chiefs, and unfortunately, that's what the 49ers did um, last night. You know, three things I've taken away from this. One, Jimmy Garoppolo is no Tom Brady. I think he should have had to pay attention instead of uh, trying to go out and make a whole lot of money from another team after getting traded and going out banging porn stars. I mean, dude, focus on the game next time. All right, that's why you didn't win. You know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there was a rumor going around he was dating a, uh, a porn star by the name of Kiara Mia. There was a rumor that she had a crush on him and, uh, and all this good stuff. So I figured that, <laughs> it's like Jimmy Garoppolo, don't do it, bro. Save the women for after the game, shall we? Celebrate each victory. But um, nonetheless, that was the rumor going around. I don't know if that's true or not. We don't know for sure. But if it is, stay away from the ladies right now, did Jimmy, next time. Focus on the game. That's what you should have done last night. Two, Mike Shanahan. He was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons that blew a 28-3 lead. Going into the third quarter, the 49ers had a 10-point lead. Can somebody explain that why they would blow it? Mike Shanahan, what are you thinking? And three, Wes Walker is their wide receivers coach for the 49ers. Gee, I wonder if he taught, 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 them, <coughs> taught them to drop one. Goodness sakes. Anyways, that is where we stand right now. So, the final score, 31-20. to 20. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Their first Super Bowl in, fi in their 50-year franchise history. Andy Reid, congratulations to him. Patrick Mahomes, like I said, he's, quarterback, he's one of the quarterbacks of the future. Watch him and watch him very closely. And we did that, and then Patrick Mahomes and... The only downside with Patrick Mahomes, he's got an annoying girlfriend. Okay, that's the only thing. So, other than that, Patrick Mahomes is a good quarterback. Bright future for him. Garoppolo, don't give up. Uh, also, like I say, just focus, um, stay focused on getting wins and, uh, and all that. I know the movie star good looks of Jimmy Garoppolo could be the distracting feature, but that is the way it is and when, you're, you're, when you're with a team in California. Okay, uh, my thoughts on the halftime show and the national anthem. Now, national anthem, I admit that I never, ever listened to any of Demi Lovato's albums. Because of my, my mind, my head is still stuck in the 80s and 90s music. That's how crazy I can be. But after hearing her sing the national anthem, what a woman, what a voice. You know, I always, you know, but I do admit I have a little bit of a crush on her because of the fact that she's gorgeous and beautiful. There's no doubt about it. When I first saw her on the Disney Channel, uh, on the Disney Channel, I thought she had this annoying smile. Eee, like she's like, "Very excited to be here." I get that. I was like, "I'm like, nah." But then she turned out to be a very mature young lady who went through a lot of stuff in her life and came out stronger than ever and looking more beautiful and more gorgeous than ever before. So um, I have to admit, I'm in love with Demi Lovato, but. I'm not going to obsess myself with one celebrity. Sorry about that. Because i got to go over to the halftime show, J-Lo and Shakira. My Lord. Shakira's 43, J-Lo is 50, and they still look like they're freaking 20 years old. I mean, they are just total, total hotties. I mean, they, I'm like, wow. They still can, they still can go. They still can go on the dance floor, man. But the cool, part, um, the cool moment was when um, J-Lo's 11-year-old daughter sang with her mom. I thought that was a cool moment for for that. It's a good, cool family moment. I think it was great. Um, that was a good sentimental moment that I think came out of this. And having um, having having your kids join you up on stage sometimes sometimes it's really cool for them just to spending time with family, even if you have to do your job. And and, and having that moment happen, I thought it was really cool. It was like, hey, you know, you get to spend time with your family and get paid for it. That's you know, it's a win win for everybody. But but. Uh, but it's a, but it's a really cool moment, and I, and but J Lo at fifty, she's just, so woman still got it. I'm telling you, a lot of people have been upset with this because it's more controversial. Not as controversial as Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake Super Bowl. Remember back in 2003, 
Good Lord. That is, that's why, that's why the Super Bowl halftime shows are, you know, to a lot of people not up to par, but this one is very good, very well done, and I think, uh, you know, Jalen and Shakira, what a duet. And hopefully they do, they do a song together. That would be really cool. And they did some of the old school songs from back in the day. Um, hey, you know, um, you know, here's the crazy thing about music, okay? Um, here's, a, here's the crazy thing about music. Um, music, ha- ha- you know, in my life, in my era, there was, you know, many catchy tunes, but at the same time, you know, and... Um, <clears throat> some there's some music I'm into, you know some songs I like and some songs I don't. So I'm very very picky about what songs I like. You know you're talking about let's let's div- div- divide it up into the well let's get music in the 90s. All right, it's crazy in the 90s because you have um, hip hop. You got you got a little bit of rap, a little bit of you know pop, uh, R and B, and then you got a little freestyle, and then. Freestyle became even bigger in the mid-90s, I think 94, 95, 96, around that era. In the mid-90s, you got your alternative, you got your sky, you got your gangster rap, you got your, you uh, you got your boy bands, you know, boy bands and girl bands, like, uh, you know, you got the Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, um, yeah, shoot. Um, British group 911 who did the song Love Sensation. Don't go changing, rearranging. Hold on to a love sensation. If you ever go away, that will be my darkest day. Or something. Um, you got BB Mac. Oh, shoot. Uh, S Club 7. Wow. Um, I mentioned the Spice Girls already. You got Hanson. Hanson. You got it. I can forget a handsome one. Mm bop, do ba da ba do bop, do ba da ba do bop. Um, you had you had your um, early nineties with Mariah Carey. You got, you know, you got in the mid nineties. You got Black Street. Um, you got uh, oh man, you, you know, I can go on. You know, you got you got pop, you got pop princesses. You got you got Britney Spears. You got um, Christina Aguilera, Jessica Simpson. You know, Jennifer Lopez, you had the Latin movement in the late 90s, yeah. Jen- J-Lo, uh, Mark Anthony, Ricky Martin, and Shakira, you know, in the early 2000s. And it's unbelievable, right? And it's, it's crazy. Um, also, in the, in the, in also, in the mid-90s, you know, the old, um, pop groups from all, you know, from across the pond, you know, like I mentioned, the Spice Girls, uh, BB Mac, you got five uh, steps, S Club 7. You, It's crazy, you know, that era in, you know, the 90s, in the 90s music and era, um, 90s Mary goes even crazy. You get so get so many flavors coming in. It's crazy, and I, you know, I just I just like I just like that music. Um, era of music back in the day, I grew up with Michael Jackson. Um, Michael Jackson, you got you know Van Halen, you got your you know Twisted Sister, you got the Fat Boys, Run DMC, uh, you got the Go Go's, the Bangles, Culture Club, Thompson Twins. I mean. You know, Banana Rama, I and mean, I can I can go on. Oh, yeah, another uh, you know, freestyle, you know, like like Sweet Sensation in the '90s, Ace of Base, for goodness sakes. And I can go on, you know, in music. And then when I got to contemporary Christian music, I think you know it was really cool. Very, it's totally awesome. It's very spiritual, enlightening, and uh, totally awesome. You know, getting that. You know, I grew up with. You know, my my stepmother introduced me to Amy Grant, Michael W. Smith, Carmen. You know, I went. When I started going to my church youth group, it's Petra, Newsboys, and DC Talk, you know, and, uh, you know, news, we do a lot of news, my, my church, my church, the church band that I am involved in, we do a lot of um, Michael W. Smith songs and Newsboys songs, um, and it's mind-blowing, and it's, it's, and I'm, I'm telling you, so, the 80s, 90s era of music, it's what I liked, so, you know, and J-Lo and Shakira kind of brought, brought me back to those days, too, and so, you know, when when J Lo did Winning for Tonight, Let's Get Loud. You got Shakira, Whenever, Whatever. That's the song, that, you know. And uh, you know, hips don't lie. You know, back then, and it just it's it's crazy. It's crazy how uh, you know. I'm hoping that you know, those kind of era of music. You know, there's you know, you know what's my, amazing about that era of music in the 80s and 90s is that many people, many young millennials, comment on those and say, Hey, I like this kind of music. You know, a lot of people say it's better than the crap we have. You know. And I have to admit, I'm right. You know, I think 
music to me started being very unappealing in the 2010s a little bit. Exception of Duran Duran. You talk about an 80s band that's still going strong. Duran Duran. All right, did songs like, you know, you know, Reach Up for the Sunrise back in 2004 was one of, I played that song of very superstition when the Red Sox had their World Series run in 2004, which is crazy. I played that song when I was at Ruby Tuesday. You know, it was just insane. And then, and then you got uh, All You Need Is Now. Was it 2011, I believe? Or was it, you know, when I, and that's one of my favorite songs. So it's a Duran Duran still going strong. It's unbelievable. But like I said, music of the 2010s don't want to appeal me as much in the, last, in the that past decade. Um, you know, Katy Perry, you know, Katy Perry there's, that's another beautiful young lady right there. Um, I Kissed a Girl, like that song. Um, Roar, you know, was a really cool song, too. Like I said, I never listened to any of Demi Lovato's albums. And because uh, like, I think the music in the 2000s, the past te- te- this past decade, wasn't as appealing to me as it was you know, in the, two, in the early 2000s and the 80s and 90s kind of era. I like that kind of era of music, you know. No offense to any of the current artists out there, you know, doing their thing. And there's a lot of people who are fans of these artists, so no offense to them. It's like 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Those, those, that kind of music appeals to me more, you know, even in the contemporary Christian uh, music. And it's really, really cool, really, really awesome. And just, <coughs> and that, you know, that gets me going if you, you know, like, you know, if I'm at a wedding and uh, let's say Montel joins, this is how we do it, up I'm on that dance floor, pal. That's how I am, you know. You know, I'd be like electrifying just like the rock. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's so cool. So that's why I think the halftime show did, you know, I liked it because of the fact that, that nostalgia appeal almost, the music wise. So, and J Lo and Shakira can, can sing a little bit, especially Shakira, man. Woman's got a voice like crazy. I mean, unbelievable. So, that's my that's my thoughts on the halftime show, um, all that because I'm because I'm, I'm musically inclined now. I'm a drummer for my church band, so it's uh, like I said, it's totally totally just you know, I just like I just like that kind of music, and I you know, and it all started with Michael Jackson's Thriller. I got that as a cassette for my birthday, and I still have a, that cassette hidden in there somewhere. So it's um, really cool. So I. And the, and the game, the game itself was it was an even match, evenly matched game. I I knew it would be, but I thought it would be close, be like, like three points, but eleven points about as close as you can get. And um, like I said, the Chiefs, the Chiefs have been known to, to come back from this as a the first team to do it in three comeback victories. It's unbelievable what what the Chiefs are all about. So we're gonna have to watch for them next year. If we're gonna get, if the Patriots were to get the seventh. Uh, Seventh uh, Lombardi Trophy. First thing you gotta do is get Tom Brady back and get him some weapons that can help, or get the and develop these new weapons into great wide receivers and great weapons. That way Brady can trust them and say, "Hey, we're gonna get it together and we're gonna do this." You know, sometimes they're not used to the uh, Patriots way of things, but you know what? I think I believe I think so. Um, you know, Greg Olson says he, you know, he, he'll be their option if uh, they don't get Gronk back and if. And everybody said, "Well, we can get Gronk and Olsen. Hey, like, hey, great! You know, let's let's do this. You know." <clears throat> but um, right now, I think the Patriots should focus on the off season and focus on one thing at a time. And um, the, the you know, I, I you know, there's some good things that come out of the Patriots not making it to the Super Bowl. There's some good things like you know, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady can relax and have fun. You see, Bill Belichick. He has to stop smiling. I mean, Bill Belichick, every time you see a picture of Bill Belichick, he's smiling a lot. He's smiling normally. He's serious. He's always, uh, we're going to focus on the game and all that. And just be serious. You know, You know, the guy eats, sleeps, and drinks football, for God's sakes. But, you know, and Bill Belichick's relaxing, having a good time, showing off the rings. I'm like, ah, oh, Belichick's a little loose. You know, that could be no, that could be of the upside of things. The downside is, yeah, they're not going to be able to, you know. But imagine the pressure beyond the Patriots to try to get their seventh Super Bowl. I mean, the pressure's on them. The spotlight would be on them. I mean, think about it. I, I mean, th- kind of think about it. You know, the Patriots, imagine if the Patriots were in that situation against the 49ers. You're talking about a quest to win the seventh Super Bowl. Imagine, and like, it could, it could, you know, I don't know if the team would take the pressure. And with the injuries that we had and the way the team played uh, this past season, it may not, ha- could not couldn't happen because we probably were a few weapons shy of winning it all. But the fact of the matter is, is this. It's the way it is, you know. The Chiefs took over, you know. Um, the Chiefs took over for the AFC. And congratulations to them, and um, you know, like Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, all those guys, Andy Reid, 
they did a wonderful job with, with that team and just you know hey first first Super Bowl in 50 years man you know that you know um, so this will be the first championship in five years since uh, the Kansas City Royals uh, won it in 2015 and Donald Trump I mean God bless the president here. I mean, he's a little bit crazy. You know, Kansas City's in Missouri, but then there's two Kansas Cities in Missouri and in Kansas. Also, I think Trump could be confused, or the guy who tweets for him is confused. I don't know. You know, even even a bishop called uh, the bishop, the bish a bishop, a church bishop called him an idiot. I'm like, wow. If a church bishop called you an idiot, then you really done something wrong. So it's a. Uh, uh, like I said, my thoughts on the Super Bowl, it's uh, it's pretty good. It was pretty good, even though I was a Pats fan. I decided, well, I'm going to watch it just in case, because you never know who, you know, if anybody from that, of either of those two teams will end up with the Patriots. I don't know, you know. Crazier things have happened. And um, maybe, maybe Bill Belichick scouting both teams out. That way he can prepare for another next next season if they have, you know, if they end up getting a chance to face them again. And uh, it would be very interesting if the Chiefs are on the schedule, because it will be so... Interesting, right there and then, you know. So, I gotta take. I mean, listen, I gotta take up my hat up to the Chiefs. You know, they, you know, they done it. You know, 49ers don't worry about a thing. I'm sure you guys will be back next year. Probably a few more weapons, and and uh, we gotta stop with the penalties. I think the penalties really killed the 49ers, especially um, George Kittle's penalty um, in the first half. I think that kind of killed the momentum for the 49ers, unfortunately. So, and uh, and. It's, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. So that's my thoughts on the Super Bowl. We're going to move on. You know, those of you who have a team in the NFL, I mean the NFL, the XFL, you can go football season. will continue on for you starting this coming Saturday, actually. So it'll be very interesting. I think I have the day off that day, so I'm possibly going to watch, see what's going on there. Um, baseball, we come through the truck just left for Florida. And uh, there's a big to do about Raw tonight because Utah's got a big, humongous snowstorm um, coming down. So I don't know if uh, the governor will be uh, doing a, uh, an emergency or what. I'll find out in about eight minutes because Raw's coming up tonight. And we are getting a little bit of a wintry mix. They didn't say anything about a storm here, but a wintry mix. Wednesday, late Wednesday into Thursday. Uh, morning and it would change over. The... Funny is Wednesday it'll start off as rain and it'll die down for a bit and it'll start up as, like as a wintry mix, snow, sleet, freezing rain, and then possibly um, and then and then and then Thursday uh, it's, it, it's going to be the highest going to be 46 so it's going to be a lot of rain in the forecast as well, light rain but. <clears throat> if that's the case, if we have to do shovel some snow that Thursday at the mall, I think it won't be as uh, probably don't have to worry about a whole bunch of it. We'll probably you know wait till the rain, wait till the roads are clear and all that. Um, I did survive a drive in the snow, so I'll probably have to do it again if if need be. So, and I'm hoping that, you know. So we'll see what happens. You know, th- things could change. It could just be mostly rain. I don't know. A lot weird things have happened, and uh, you know. Anything is possible at this at this rate in time. So, um, so anything else going on? Uh, not much really. Um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been that kind of day. It's been it's been that kind of week already. It's already Monday. Monday's already started. So um, this week's already started. The first half of the week, weather wise, not going to be that bad. Um, according to what the groundhogs have been saying, you didn't see a shadow. That means we might have an early spring. I don't know about that because the groundhog is forty percent accurate at the time. So, but you know, the good news is that you know this winter has been pretty decent weather-wise. Like I say, you know, and uh, I like for it to keep up that way. So we'll see what happens. Um, that's it. That's all the time we have on this great show, episode four sixty-two complete. Um, no, actually, episode four sixty-three. Excuse me, I said four sixty-two this whole freaking time. It's supposed to be episode 463. This is episode 463. My bad. My era. Oh, my God. Okay? And uh, I'm thinking of introducing a funny uh, Portuguese. Now, I'm half Portuguese. You know, I got, uh, we got Weather Manny with Steve, Lope, uh, uh, Steve Lopes. You got my good friend Jordan Paiva with Weather Paiva. And um, you got the Portuguese kids. And I figured I would introduce a funny Portuguese 
wrestling character who just talks about random stuff, uh, what he thinks about the weather and all this good stuff. Um, I'm, I gave I gave it a name that I think is pretty funny. It's Quackish Frisbina Buckleyow. <laughs> I, I you know I need to get a wrestling mask, a real wrestling mask, so I can introduce Quackish Frisbina Buckleyow over here, and maybe something something like you know. Hey, it's Quackish Fridge being a buckle yeah, over here. Uh, gonna play some video games, play the little uh, Portuguese guy with the, the mushrooms. He gets high on drugs and all this, and, and he beats up the dragon, and uh, we win. You know, something like that. I don't know. I, I'm just, you know, just a little shot. It's, it's something for the future, so uh, I don't know when I'm gonna do it. Do it, and uh, probably. I think it's. It, I'm, I'm trying to make it hilarious, and and, uh, and plus, I, uh, I love being half Portuguese. It's really cool because I believe in family. And have a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, no schwanka <laughs> gal. <laughs> oh, schwanka, what a sakan. Uh, hey, he's my cousin, Epa. Epa, I can't believe he's going to die. You know, love to check out the Portuguese kids. They're hilarious. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about the information. Schwanka <laughs> gal. I check out my good friend, Jordan Paiva. He DJed my cousin Bree's wedding, and he did an awesome job with it. Um, not only that, um, he's a talented singer and quite the comedian. So you gotta check him out. Um, go on Facebook, type in Jordan Piva. You know, you know he does his weather Piva shtick and all that good stuff. So, <coughs> so we survived. Praise God. So I survived today. Um, it's already February, so we're on. A, so we're gonna be on our way, and we're gonna do this. All right, I better get off here because Monday Night Raw is coming on in about four minutes. I gotta see what's going on with Raw. There's lots of stuff going on. Whether or not they're gonna do a show, we'll see what happens. All right. I'll see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful day. Episode 463 of EML 77 TV complete. Super Bowl aftermath thoughts, and um, I gave my opinion. So you guys have a wonderful day. God bless. Peace, and uh, see you in episode 464. What am I gonna talk about then? Who knows with me? Remember, it is the YouTube show in which sentimental thoughts come from the heart. And also the YouTube show where mental oddball shenanigans run from my brain. It's EML 77 TV. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.